This is the Psychic Artist Podcast. I'm your host, Sarah Rossiter. I'm an artist, writer, and psychic medium living in Hawaii. This show is about people who are intuitive and creative, and what the process of integrating that awareness looks and feels like, and how we can access and develop that place inside of us all that is supremely psychic. For today's episode, I speak with Andrea Kennedy. She is a Reiki master, and I found her work online through her YouTube channel called Mainstream Reiki, where she offers Reiki to you through the videos. She also teaches Reiki and offers mentoring and individual Reiki sessions. We talk about her journey and her thoughts about this amazing practice that supports the body's natural ability to heal itself through life force energy. I hope you enjoy. So welcome, Andrea Kennedy, to the Psychic Artist Podcast. I'm so happy to have you. I'm excited to talk about Reiki with you today. Please share with us what you do. Oh, thank you so much, Sarah. It's a real pleasure to be here with you as well. Um, I am a Reiki master. Uh, You know, I started Reiki back in 1995, way back when, when there was hardly anything out there, really, as far as literature or, or, you know, different uh, support or in, in our practice. I don't think I ever heard of a Reiki share, you know, where we get together and share Reiki with each other for years after I first, I took my first class. So, you know, things have really changed over the last 20 something years uh, of my Reiki practice. And, you know, now I am primarily offering online and live classes and so what a what a shift it's been you know over all these years but i love reiki for so many reasons and i'm just very excited to to be here today and see where our conversation takes us yes me too it's really amazing how i've been getting so much guidance recently to talk about reiki Um, it wasn't necessarily my personal intention i'm an artist i do reiki i teach reiki but I was thinking, oh, I'm going to be doing a lot with creativity and consciousness this year. And then the angels and guys just keep pointing me back to share Reiki, share Reiki. So it feels like um, the spiritual gift that we have to share in this time is super simple and precise. And Reiki, as I've heard you say in your videos, you have an amazing YouTube channel where you share Reiki. I'm so grateful for that, by the way. Thank you. Thanks Thank so you. much. It has helped me so much and people that I know. And I feel like the generosity with which you share that is kind of the energy that we're talking about today, that, that Reiki is really peaceful and really supportive and such a perfect antidote to what we're all experiencing during this time in the last few years. Well, first of all, thank you so much for that, Sarah. You know, I never thought I'd have a YouTube channel, but you know, you talk about (laughs) guidance and following guidance. And I have to say that's that whole explanation, you know, from the creation of it and into the evolution of it, really. I have to agree with you wholeheartedly. And while art and creativity, I think is fantastic for people to explore and perhaps even um, heal through and gain more create more creativity but freedom of expression and things like that i mean the gifts from that are immense but i think you bring up a really good point about reiki and the times that we're in and in this prodding to share it and you know it probably goes back to the youtube channel uh really i think it's all together i don't think that there was uh i I just don't believe in accidents, and I, I'm willing to bet you don't either. And um, we are in a time, I think, where for me, if we can remember that we're connected to each other, not just to uh, source energy or whatever you want to call it, you know, spiritually speaking, but if, if I think the magic for our evolution, for our survival, for our 
um, ability to thrive as humans, I think it boils down to remembering how we are connected to each other. And to me, Reiki is an example of that. It Reiki is inclusive. Reiki does not discriminate. <laughs> anybody can learn Reiki. Anybody can practice Reiki. Anybody can benefit from Reiki. There's no, um, you know, admission fee as far as who you have to be. There's no, uh, no one's excluded. The energy doesn't say, oh, okay, you can learn about me, but not you. Everybody's worthy, everybody's deserving, and everybody is included in that. And I can't think of too many things that I can say that about, you know, and furthermore, the basis of Reiki is this universal life force energy. We all have that. And it's like, oh, well, then we're all included. And I think that having that example of inclusiveness can be a foundation for us to remember that we all are connected and that we can take responsibility and power into our own hands, literally, or are better, whether it be physical, mental, emotional, or spiritual. So I could just keep talking forever. <laughs> but um, I do think that it's no accident the times we're in. And it seems like Reiki is just gaining more and more steam as far as people finding out about it and seeking it out. Um, and I just, I'm so excited. It's such an exciting time, I think, to be involved with Reiki. Yes, I totally agree. And I see it as like a healing balm that is being offered to us to share. Not only is it, like you said, available to all of us, we all have this power innately inside and become, you know, being trained to do it and being attuned is kind of like waking up, taking off the cloak and saying, okay, I'm, I'm going to use this other aspect of myself. But it's also um, for a lot of us to realize the power that we have to heal ourselves and others is very transformative for the planet. And uh, Reiki can be used on animals. I've recently been instructed to use it on water, um, you know, people, on ourselves. Uh, it's just amazing. It's very metaphysical and practical. Um, so I wonder if we can ask you a few questions that are pretty basic. Like, I think you just explained what Reiki is, but I know that you also can explain it to people that have never experienced it before. So I think you might want to do that. Right. Well, you know, it's funny. I have to chuckle because when I first learned Reiki, I didn't know anything about energy as far as our energy or spirituality, nothing. Uh, I was uh, trained in physics. I have a bachelor's of science in physics. And when I when Reiki really found me, I thought energy was, you know, an x-ray or, you know, the thing that you plugged into when you plugged your lamp into the wall. I mean, that is what I thought energy was. And I think that we can describe Reiki in so many different contexts. You know, some people describe it more in spiritual terms. Um, I, I tend to to stay more in the, the I don't know, maybe mainstream. More, yeah, mainstream. You're right. Yeah, thanks. This is, yes. So this is the name of your your business, mainstream. It Reiki. is yeah. mainstream Reiki. Yeah, a, yeah. A great Again, um, that came in. Uh, you know that guidance. You know, and I just resonated so much with that idea of. I thought there was a day, and I was wondering about Reiki, and what happened was, I thought you know Reiki's often thought of as New Age. And it doesn't need to be. And if it is kept in that definition of a new age, you know, perhaps woo woo type practice, like it's other. going to, yeah, it's going to exclude people. Right. And, you know, I just thought that's not Reiki. Reiki doesn't exclude people. 
who need who who could benefit from Reiki? And I thought mainstream people. That's where it's at. And that's where that whole mainstream Reiki idea came through. But, you know, put simply, I think what I would say is Reiki is spiritually guided life force energy. You might say universally guided life force energy. But that word is important because we aren't doing the healing. We are not the source of the energy. The, the energy has a sort of knowing, has a sort of um, wisdom to it. And so we're just the ones who bring it through. And I would say the word channel, we channel Reiki energy, um, you know, through us. We're, we're not offering our own energy at all. Uh, channel, some people, that sounds a little woo-woo and a little new age. And so what I would just say, um, and I think we tend to choose our words appropriately for the audience, right? And so if you're talking to a nurse or a doctor, you know, at least if I do, I, I choose different words. And um, what I would say is that we all have this life force energy. And most people can say, oh, yeah, you know, we, we're animated. You know, we have an energy about us. And that energy flows in and around our bodies in energy pathways. So we might say chakras, we might say meridians and things like that, or we don't have to. But basically, we have this energy anatomy these pathways for that life force energy to flow. And when it flows in a way that is in resonance to what the intention is, so we it's flowing through the pathways the way it's designed to, we feel good, we feel in balance, we feel peace, we can handle what life brings us. But you know, things happen in our lives, um, just being human, and we can have little upsets in life or large upsets in life and um, even just uh, physical in injury, you know. So it could be emotional, mental, physical, any of these things. And that having those events that affect us can impede the flow of that energy through those pathways the way it's designed to. And when that happens, if we don't get back in balance with that flow, we'll begin to not feel uh, good, you know, in some ways. And it can manifest in all different kinds of ways. But Reiki, and this is a really long answer to your question, uh, but Reiki is just this technique. And, and I wouldn't even say technique. Reiki is a sort of practice that we engage in just to bring this source energy, this life force energy that is not our own, but we bring it through for the highest good of whatever it is we're offering it to. It could be a person, an animal, a plant, water, like you say, because this energy, um, you know, in my viewpoint, I, I hold the belief that this energy is creationary. And I don't even know if that's a word, but I do use that word and it's just a basic component of all of creation, you know, this energy. So it is like a fish to water. So it's just natural. And that brings me to the next aspect of Reiki, which is it can do no harm. What can only do benefit and no harm? I can't think of anything. Plus on top of that, add in that inclusivity again. And so thirdly, we would add that Reiki does not require any beliefs. You don't even have to believe in Reiki to benefit from Reiki. Again, it's kind of sounds too good to be true. But <laughs> you take those three things, the inclusivity, the it can't do harm. And you know, no beliefs in anything, not even in Reiki, which could sort of fall in the inclusivity part of this equation. But I do want to give it separate um, airtime, so to speak, because I think that that's a big part of who we are as humans. We have a lot of beliefs. And so I, I do think it separating it out is important. And um, so Reiki, a practitioner, 
we can do this for ourselves. we can do this for others but we're simply bringing through this high vibration high frequency universally guided life force energy for the highest good of ourselves or someone else and that's it we don't have to do anything the energy does it and that really goes counter to our thinking in as humans because you know we are so taught are we not that you know no pain no gain you know that's a big collective consciousness sort of idea uh, or belief you know back to the the belief thing but yeah um you know to we're not used to getting any sort of result if we're not trying and reiki is an example of being not doing so we can bring through that energy and what ends up happening is that person let's just say we're going to offer it to another person their energetic system their life force energy that they are already you know that they already possess knows exactly how to meet the reiki energy that we bring through it knows what to do and wonderful things happen so energy that was blocked up through those pathways can be loosened can be released and then the energy flows better yeah. and this creates well i would say um in general uh the most reported thing at least from my experience is the person feels very relaxed very relaxed um and now in the if we want to get a little more sciencey uh we might explain that our nervous system has two modes and one is fight or flight or um, uh, sympathetic and then the other side is the parasympathetic side of the nervous system and so we have the fight or flight and then this other one and the parasympathetic is often called the rest digest and restore mode of the body mm -hmm. our cells need to spend time in that mode to do all of the functions that they need to do for us to have vitality for for our body to work properly and i think that a, a big epidemic uh, you know stressor that we you know we have all this stress in life especially lately you know again going back to the times that we're in so we have more stress more of a unique stress but what happens with reiki is it shifts the nervous system to the rest digest and restore mode that's why we feel relaxed during Reiki. That's also why our stomachs might growl. Um, we might um, have more saliva in our mouth when we're receiving Reiki because your our digestive systems start ramping up. It's like, oh, we're gonna we're gonna rest now. Oh, here we go. And if you think about all the different digestive issues in society. And then you realize we're probably going through life, a lot of us, just eating whenever we can, right? We don't take our time to sit, to relax, to reiki ourselves maybe even before we eat. And so if we're eating our food and we're in that fight or flight mode, which that's the stressed state, imagine what impact that may have on our digestion and our ability of, to absorb the nutrients that yeah. we are taking in. So is it any wonder about all of these issues that we have with the gastrointestinal system in today's day and age? So yeah, yeah um, it's just, a, it's a huge topic, but um, so anyway, Reiki, spiritually guided <laughs> life force energy doesn't do harm and it provides balance and relaxation for the recipient of it and the body just naturally performs better in that relaxed state and it also um, helps our immune system because we're not under the stress so our immune system all the systems of the body get a chance to take a break and the body is so intelligent yes it's so divinely 
you know, inspired and constructed and Reiki helps give people, animals, wh whoever is benefiting that respite to reset and restore so that they can better um, uh, respond to yes. life. Yes, the message I get is that it's it's um, we it allows us to spend time in the vibration of love essentially so we are checking in almost like the ideal sleep state or in yoga yoga nidra or something that people might describe as like a deep state um, i feel like reiki is just instantly putting you into the frequency of you know extreme love basically and it's uh, what we are made of as you say uh, so it's a it's a beautiful way to reset and ground yourself and heal ailments and also um, it's opened up a lot of psychic abilities for me and a lot of creativity for me it exponentially has an effect so I'm curious about um, your personal story what has brought you to Reiki and what are some of the magical experiences you've had personally, if you oh. would like to share anything? Sure. Well, when I first started with Reiki, I already told you, you know, how I came to it. And it was, I was, it was a family member visiting and she was just talking all about Reiki. I, I, I didn't search it out. I didn't have an ailment that I was looking for help with, which it does bring a lot of people to Reiki. You know, they're looking for a uh, complimentary um, modality or something to help them with an issue. I was just clueless. And um, my great aunt was visiting and she was talking all about this Reiki thing. And I'm like, what are you talking about? But I was so curious about this and her stories and things like that. And she finally said, she says, well, I can teach you level one before I go home. And I was like, okay so i learned it from her my husband actually did too we both did a little reiki one class with her before she went home and i felt nothing i absolutely felt nothing you know people might talk about you know in reiki part of reiki is the attunement process that you're attuned to the reiki frequencies of energy that allows us to bring that through and so the attunement process um it, it's sort of I'm going to say, you know, just to keep it simple, it's sort of like a, a multi-step process in, in the traditional way. At least that's how I started. It's a multi-step method. Um, it's meditative, I would say. And the Reiki master teacher is in uh, the energy field of the student. And uh, again, uh, again, I was wanting to make this simple, but... Um, <laughs> I don't know. How would you even say this? They, transmission they, is the word I hear. Yeah, transmission. Yeah, it, there's, I guess it's so. Like opening a door. I see a key going into a door, and there's several doors to walk through. Right. Um, to really be have the flow, and you're helping. That's true. And, and part of the reason I'm having trouble with that is, you know, that's how I started with the, and was attuned in that method. And I've changed in how I practice Reiki and I do holy fire Reiki now. And our whole attunement process is different. And so anyway, I'll set that aside, but it's, I, I it just resonates with me. But anyway, maybe we'll yes. go with that later. I'm, but I'm excited to hear about that too. Okay, great. And so what happened was I felt nothing, but, and I thought, okay, so what am I supposed to do now? And I would practice with my husband and he would say, oh, yeah, I feel some tingling and warmth. And he would give me feedback. And I would think this is crazy. I mean, I nothing. And he's reporting relaxation and, uh, and these benefits and all of this and sensations. He's the reason I stuck with it, because if I wouldn't have had that feedback and I have to imagine there were probably a lot of people out there over the years who did learn and didn't feel much and didn't get the feedback. And that really saddens me because that was the key for me to stick with it and not think this is just, you know, 
a fairy tale or something like that. So I, I have a lot of gratitude for the fact that he took the training with me and allowed me to practice with him and gave me the feedback. So it was very instrumental. Um, but you know, life got in the way, you know, we were, we were, we hadn't been married that long and uh, then his job changed and, you know, then kids came. And so, uh, you know, confessions of a Reiki master here. It wasn't like I had a big Reiki practice or anything back then, but I, it was on the back burner. It was always on simmer is what I like to say for me. So it also opened me up to be more curious about these topics, about the metaphysical, about Reiki, about about that world that I really, I had been curious about metaphysical things before I learned Reiki, but it was so over there. But after I learned Reiki, it was more uh, accessible to me. The curiosity sort of ramped up. And then what ended up happening was really um, uh, the big turning point for me was, it was several years later and I was watching Oprah Winfrey and I was a stay at home mom. I had a little boy and I think it was about two ish, one and a half, two. And I was watching Oprah and Oprah had Carolyn Mace on her show. And for anybody who doesn't know, she's a world renowned medical intuitive. And so I watched that episode and was floored. I just was, oh, you talk about curious. She could hear a person's name and their age, and she could diagnose them with a medical condition more accurately than a physician who spent an hour with the patient. And her accuracy rate was like 92%. I was like, wow. So I was so intrigued by that. And I was kind of sad when the show ended. And I thought, that how does she do that? And I probably had a zillion questions going through my mind. Within a week's time, less than a week, I went to my mailbox to get my mail and there was a full color postcard type thing from a company I'd never heard about before in my whole life addressed to me and it said, come to Egypt for a workshop with Carolyn Mace. <laughs> and I was like, what? <laughs> Not just across the state line, but actually all the way to Egypt. That's yeah. great. And something overtook me out in front of my house, you know, by my mailbox. I was just like, oh, I gotta go. And I wouldn't shut up. I was by myself, you know, my little boy was upstairs napping and I just was sitting at my kitchen table going, oh, I gotta go, I gotta go, I gotta go, I gotta go. How am I gonna go? I don't know. And I just was in this state of, energy <laughs> and then my poor husband came home and I I pounced on him as soon as he gets in the door and I say honey I gotta go to Egypt and he looked at me with the craziest look but I have to say he is phenomenal and he's always always uh supported me and my crazy ideas and you know whatever it is and he, of course, had all these questions for me, and I don't blame him. Uh, I didn't really have many answers for him at the time, but he took vacation uh, from work. He took two weeks off. He stayed at home with our little boy, and I went to Egypt Wow! For this trip. Yeah. And, you know, the, the workshop was on archetypes. I was young. I was just in my... I don't know. I have to do math, which I can't do talking to you, but um, I was probably in my mid my mid 20s didn't know anything about anything you know back then but uh it was on archetypes and um you know i could go on and on but yeah it was i'll, She's I'll skip a interesting Pardon. teacher to me i was just about to contact her actually oh wow uh, how interesting she's on my list right next to your name of people to talk to <laughs> well how about that because you know a little a little um Cosmic alignment. Um, a little bit, a little bit, yeah. So what I'll say, I'll skip a little bit, um, you know, because again, I could just keep going and going. But the turning point with Reiki was really, we had a meditation, a sunrise meditation at the Sphinx. 
and it was towards the end of the trip. And I was not a meditator. I wasn't even that spiritual. I was very mainstream, you know, I, while I had curiosity and things like that, that was about it. There were a lot of people on the trip because we had, uh, it was a, a tour that we were doing. So there was a group of us and there were people that I just knew were very spiritual. And so I thought, what am I going to do at this meditation, the Sphinx? So I just decided to just copy the other people. Um, <laughs> you know, I didn't know. And so I, I uh, did that. And it, when it was my turn, I went between the legs of the Sphinx and I just put my hands up on the, the Sphinx. And I, that because that's what they had done when it was their turn. And I did that and I just closed my eyes and I took a deep breath and all of a sudden it was like a lightning bolt of knowing or something, you know, but a message very clearly came through that was not from my own brain. And it was uh, when you get back home, finish your Reiki training, just this idea. And I was very surprised. I hadn't thought about Reiki. I nothing. It was so out of the blue. But when I took that in there, it resonated with me. And I thought, Oh, yeah, that feels like a good idea. You know, and so I went ahead and made plans. And that's when I uh, when I got home, I got my little boy and we uh, flew to uh, gave my husband a break <laughs> from staying home with them for two full weeks. But uh, I took my uh, little boy down with me and we visited my great aunt and I finished all my Reiki training in a week because she's the only Reiki person I knew. And I, at the time, I lived in Pennsylvania and she lived in Texas. So I went down there and it was a whirlwind of a week, but I completed uh level two, and then the master training all together. What an amazing story. Well, I just got chills and a sort of tingly feeling as you described your experience with the Sphinx and getting this message. And that's so beautiful and amazing that you had to go to Egypt to find that out. <laughs> it right. feels, I mean, because my audience is used to me talking about past lives and psychic stuff, I guess, but it's okay for us to talk about it. It may not be mainstream, but um, it feels like you were being called there to receive a transmission to connect to something that you already knew, but it's like in this lifetime, it's time to do this work again. It's very beautiful. I believe that a lot of people that are Reiki masters have done it before. Yeah, you know, I have to say, I, again, I was so young back then, and I wish I could remember more of every little thing that we did. And, you know, I wish, I feel like it was, I feel like I have so much more focus and presence now, you know, uh, than I did then. And, uh, but we did some amazing things there. I think part of it was I needed to be out of my routine. I needed to be out of my everyday so that I could be in a place of neutrality so that when I w did receive the guidance, it was very clear. It stood out very much. And yeah, and while psychic -y things might not be, quote, mainstream, what I would say is it most definitely really is because we all do have intuition. We all are being guided, whether we're aware of it or not, whether we listen or not. But, you know, to me, it's there. It's just, you know, how aware we are. And, and also in mainstream, we don't normally perhaps talk about it so openly, but that's changing. That yeah. is, I think, really changing. Yes. And I wonder how has it increased your psychic or intuitive awareness? It sounds like I imagine what you just said, like you're much more grounded now just from doing Reiki and from your practice. But in addition, I wonder what else has changed for you? Well, after I, well, I guess we're going to go back to Egypt for a minute because 
that that again that was a turning point in that whole um psychic realm for me so it was before the sphinx and it was about 3 a.m or so and i woke up and i had all of these thoughts just in my mind i mean uh, uh, like a uh, alphabet soup you know just and it made me um like my head was swimming I, that's how I would say with just different random thoughts and I, I couldn't be settled down and all I could think of was grab my notebook and pen and then I went and sat on the bathroom floor because I actually had the pleasure of going to Egypt with my stepmom she accompanied me on the trip and we shared a room and I didn't want to wake her up uh, by turning a light on so I went in the bathroom sat on the floor and I just thought you know to to get my notebook out and I started writing and the I mentioned a moment ago that the workshop was about archetypes and archetypes are themes that um, can uh, show up in our lives so we may um, I, I don't know you might have a better definition of archetypes Sarah <laughs> I think that what you're saying makes a lot of sense. And it makes sense too, that you were there to investigate something and then you would get a lot of information about it. And yeah. also I see the pattern of your, your process of like, right before we have a big opening, often we are just flooded. It's almost like the stages of meditation. You're flooded with all the things that are ready to be released and cleared. And sometimes you don't even need to take stock and other times writing them down can help. Right, right. Well, what I did, uh, I uh, wrote on the notebook, on the paper, you know, what is my archetype? And immediately, I mean, it's like before I even finish the question, I'm receiving an answer. And I'm thinking, this is weird. Never done anything like this in my life. And the answer was Moses. And I was like, what? You know, in the workshop, we were talking about archetypes like victim, child, you know, things like this. And so I get Moses. And so in my analytical linear mind, I'm like, well, is that isn't even an archetype, you know? So I'm being a little argumentative in my brain, but I write it down. And I, I was being, I, I say snarky. <laughs> <laughs> and so I asked in my mind, well, why Moses? You know, because I just thought I was making this up and trying to be all self-important or something. And before I could get it all out, asked, here it came. And the, the, the message that came through, the answer was, um, because you're meant to help deliver people to a better place. And I, as I wrote that down, I thought, whoa that that's that's pretty good you know and i'm thinking this is this is just crazy so then the next question i asked in my snarky attitude was well if we're gonna do all stars of the bible you know because i did i i was in disbelief of the whole thing so if we're gonna do all stars of the bible uh why am i not the jesus archetype you know why do i not have the jesus archetype Again, before I finish, the answer came through because you're not meant to sacrifice yourself in doing this. <laughs> and then I was pretty much dumbfounded on the bathroom floor in Egypt at 3.30 a.m., you know? Um, it made so much sense. I didn't know what on earth to do about that, you know? Uh, it, it, it resonated, there was a truth to it. I knew I had not made that up. But what do you do with that, you know? So so I just put it on simmer, you know, with everything else. Um, then I had my Sphinx thing and then um, did my Reiki training. And then when I got home, uh, back to Pennsylvania, I was pretty committed to really practicing regularly. And I didn't have any uh, family, you know, outside my husband and my, I, uh, yeah, I still had one child. Um, I didn't have any family around or anything and I didn't know too many people. I was just a stay at home mom. So I got really into distance Reiki 
And yeah. distance Reiki, of course, we can offer Reiki over time and space. You know, it's the energy isn't bound. And so I used to really practice distance Reiki. And when I would do that, it would be late at night after our son was in bed and I had some time and I would sit on my living room floor. And I had, of course, even from when I was little, I was always fascinated with psychic stuff and, you know, I think back in the day, I think ESP was more of a popular term, extrasensory perception, right? And I was so curious about that. And I never thought I could really do that, but it just intrigued me. And I remember I was practicing a distance Reiki session for my great grandmother who lived in Texas and was quite elderly. And I got images of her legs in my mind. I got uh, the, wor the word edema showed up in my mind. I could see in my mind's eye her legs and they were so stretched the skin was so stretched and there was modeling you know discoloration on her legs and i had that edema word and i wrote it down but the weird thing the really weird thing was i had such an excitement over it and, and not no not over it i had such an excitement with it there mm -hmm. it, it was it was true there was this truth vibration and i sat i remember i sat there and i thought what is what is happening because i thought if i had just made that up well first of all i didn't know what edema was i just had the word so i thought yeah i don't even know what that is and way back then i mean the internet and googling i mean it was a totally different thing i don't I, I probably had a laptop maybe at that time, but so it wasn't like I ran to my computer to Google it, but I just remember sitting there and I wanted to call my grandmother, you know, her daughter and share this with her. And I had, I had a knowing and an excitement that she would confirm it. And I thought that is so weird. Why on earth would I feel that way? It doesn't make any sense, but I had the excitement. I end up calling my grandmother the next day and guess what? It's completely accurate. The visual, the word, you know, the diagnosis, the, the, all of the stuff. And again, I sat there kind of like on the bathroom floor, like, okay, what, what does that mean? And what now? <laughs> yeah. Um, and I really, um, I, back then i was such a purist about reiki and i thought that you know the intuition the psychic part i was very much not into that part of it which is weird um i just never realized back then what i know now that you know you can't you're just you just can't separate that stuff out, you know, at least from my perspective, um, the and attunements. You had trained with Carolyn Mace in essence, right? Um, She's a medical intuitive, like the words that we use sometimes psychic can feel very out there, medical intuitive in the middle, like this knowing that you received was related to the ability to sense what people are experiencing. That's true. You know, I have to say, though, the workshop with her wasn't an instruction about that. So I couldn't say, yeah, yeah, she it was held more, the space, I guess, is what I feel. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, the en energy she welcomed yeah. you into her universe. <laughs> yes, that's very true. Yeah, that's really true. And I just um, was intrigued. And then I started looking around in my community for any classes I could take. So I remember I took a class and it was on, uh, oh, a, a lady, it was a few weeks long, like a, maybe a month long, it was weekly. And one of the subjects we did was aura reading, which I could never do that in the class. Um, but it, I just wasn't very good at any of the stuff, you know, that I tried with her. And then I took another class and it was all about, it was um, based on lowering the brain waves you know because again i'm i'm a sciencey person so it's 
basically getting into alpha state at least, lowering the brain waves, turns down the volume for us. So meditation can do this, right? But I started to learn a technique to just do that, to just go there without a big meditation practice or whatever. I like shortcuts, you know, I admit it. Um, and and the idea of meditating or whatever is like, oh, that's more of a spiritual thing. This is just mind-body connection, which I really liked that. I was attracted to that. And uh, so anyway, I started exploring that. Well, you can heal. You can do healing work from that way. Well, you can do healing work through Reiki. Um, and the weird thing was, I took lots of different kinds of trainings, lots of different modalities, but in the end, I just always came back to Reiki. It seemed like it was almost, not really, I have to quantify this, but there's something about Reiki inherent in all of the other things that I learned. And Reiki simple. And I've never found that I really needed anything past Reiki. It's fun to learn other modalities. It's fun to practice different things. Um, and it's fun fun to, to explore those other things. But, you know, I was really meant, you know, to, to do what I'm doing now. And, and that is all about Reiki. Yeah. When you were talking about Moses as the message, I heard this song in my head. It goes, children, go where I send thee. Where shall I send thee? Um, so it's true what you said. You know, you were called to serve in this way, to lead people to healing. And it's really a beautiful calling. Um, and I see that you've done so much work, too, through all of your trainings and your experience and your lifetime to, in the process of learning these modalities, we're also healing ourselves. And that makes us better um, vessels to offer this energy. Um, I like how you describe, um, you know, it's not me, I'm offering this, it flows through me. But mm -hmm. when your container is very clear and you've done a lot of clearing and healing work, then it, I feel like um, the transmission is also can be more clear. Um, I wonder if you can talk a little bit about that. I know this is a bit more complex, but what do you do? Maybe that would be the starting point, um, daily practices to clear one's energetic field or mind or to prepare to practice Reiki or mm -hmm. after Reiki, do you do any sort of clearing? Yeah, so this is gonna be probably unexpected. I really don't do a lot. I really no. do not. I don't. Um, I have. I have never been one. I'm not a should person, and so if I, and that has a positive and a negative to it, of course, because I should exercise every day. I don't, you know. Um, uh, but I just don't like the should energy. Uh, I don't like the burden of that. And so what I'll say is I have different things that I like to do and I choose from the basket sure. instead of do, instead of doing uh, something planned each day or whatever it is. Now, one of the things I do do is I have a distance Reiki crystal grid. And so I do charge that. I have a lot of names. You know, people request to be in the grid. And so I have a responsibility that I embrace, and that is to keep that grid charged and flowing and supporting them. So uh, that is something I do. Um, that's, that's beautiful. I don't, I don't actually know a lot about that. I mean, I see it visually when you describe it and I see how it works, but that's a beautiful thing that you offer. Oh, thanks, thanks. And so I, I will charge that, but I generally, what I do is I wake up very early in the morning and then I don't rush. I just lay there and I look out my window, it's dark and I have huge trees outside and I just watch 
I tune into myself. I tune into energy a lot of the time. Sometimes I don't, but other times I call in Reiki during that time. And I just am. I just am there. I don't have an agenda. And um, I see what comes up for me. And so I might have more of a busy mind. A, a worry might come in or a memory might come in. Um, and I... I, I'm very aware in those first moments of the day and I observe what is going on for me at that time. And I don't push things away. Uh, if there's something unpleasant, I look at it. I, I, I do, I, I, because I'm a big believer in noticing our aversions and so if, if if i want to repel a thought i need to investigate that and i think that that goes a long way i think if i were to say you know to, in answer to your question i think really what i'm doing that helps me is i am honest with myself about mm -hmm. what i'm feeling and I allow it to be. I think what can really impact people in a negative way is the aversion because that leads to so many behaviors that are not healthy for us. Very well said. That's so beautiful. And I see what you were saying before about just being. And I feel that from you when you are offering Reiki on your YouTube channel, your great gift in addition to all of your insight and you're such a natural teacher, but your tuning into just being is extremely powerful. And uh, would you say that that's kind of the trick to being a good Reiki practitioner when you train your students is to be present. I mean, when I've learned different um, healing modalities I, through yoga training, I was taught to be with what is while it is the way it is, not not doing, not sending, not taking, but just be in your body and stay present. And I feel like that was one of the gems of my trainings and has helped me with Reiki. And I teach that to my students is. Um, you're just pra your job is to be present, not to do, um, to stay in the body, to allow the energy to flow through. And I feel when I see you giving Reiki that you're extremely present. And I also suspect that you're giving Reiki through your eyes. Maybe you want to talk about that for a second. Yeah. So, you know, it took me a long time on the YouTube channel to even do a distance session. Um, I, I started the channel, I think it was the summer of 2019, I think, June something. And I, I never, I never knew about if those videos worked, you know, I knew people did them on there. And I was not a YouTube person, not really into that stuff. And, and my husband would watch YouTube and for to learn about different things. And um, uh, so I wasn't really familiar with it. But it was his idea to start the YouTube channel, um, my my uh, wonderful husband. And I had just seen a full day of clients at my office and I come home, our whole house is ripped up because uh, our whole upstairs because we were remodeling. And so we were, we'd, our kitchen was obliterated, you know, so we had a lot of stress. And so I come home from all these clients all day, I come home and I, I go find him downstairs in the basement and, and he says, honey, I think you should start a YouTube channel. And I was like, what? <laughs> you know, I have no kitchen, you know, uh, what are we even going to eat for dinner tonight? And now you think I should do a YouTube channel? Um, so I just was like, that's crazy. But he's got really great ideas, you know, and he's wise. And so I, I tend to uh, listen to, to him and at least consider what he has to say. And, and why I went there was um, there's a part of me that wants to convey that 
anybody can do this. <laughs> you know, I, I so believe that. Um, and I, when I started the channel, I didn't know anything about what I was doing and you can learn as you go. So whether we're talking about YouTube or uh, a new uh, skill or a new career or new or Reiki or whatever it is, just start it, Be just start it. Um, anyway, um, I didn't know that the video would even work. Uh, and but I had said a lot on the channel, you know, it was all informative stuff. And then and I kind of reached a point and I thought, I'm going to try this. It's time. Yeah. And so I did. It was a terrible quality video. You can hear the clock ticking. I mean, it was really bad. And I, I remember I was um, uh, there. I had my laptop and that's why the, the image wasn't very good. And that video has been watched. I don't, I, I couldn't tell you. It's my number one video on YouTube. And that video, I'm going to look it up real quick because. I watched it last night, actually. Did you? Did, yeah. did the clock and bug you? No, none of the things that you noticed bothered me. I think it's a really? great video. And so I think that's funny. I feel like that's really cool that you just did it, you know, but what comes through is the, the Reiki, right? And your presence. Uh, and you're just being and so all the other details fall to the side and it's beautiful that people it's a testament to the experience that people really receive it and you're very normal but then you're sharing something that's very profound and it's effortless well I thank you for that yeah it I just looked it up it's over 413,000 views I mean <laughs> I I can't even wrap my head around that really I it's I yeah it, it and and the response of people and to and then when they say how the different ones have helped them and what an honor you know and I have to say that that's always how I approached every session I've ever done with a person or an animal that it's an honor and i think that if a practitioner practices from that place it's beautiful yeah i i think that if i if i were to say one thing and you asked me like well what would you tell your students it is to remember that what an honor and a privilege to offer reiki to another being you know and if to me if i can do that i just i don't know a better way to, to serve i don't know a better way to connect and and the other thing i'm going to say is my i guess a big focus for me is empowerment and that's also i think what is behind my eyes in the video is i yes i want it again i don't ever use the word healer to describe me i'm not a healer um i offer reiki you know and i think the 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 experience can be healing for a person but it isn't i'm not doing anything and just offering and but as I offer, I do two things, um, I guess. And one of them is I, I, I just want whoever is watching, whenever they're watching, wherever, that they are helped for their highest good. So that is my intention. I feel the honor that here I'm going to put this out and, you know, some someone out there is going to watch it. I feel like that is a connection. That is a real connection. I also feel that um, it's I want to be an empowering presence. It isn't about coming back to my videos over and over or, you know, which is great. You know, I, there, I don't mean to discount that, but I'm hoping to somehow 
support people in recognizing that the light that they might see in me is in them too. Yeah. And if, oh, that's where it is. That to me, that's the magic. And that's one reason I love to teach Reiki. And that is an honor in and of itself. And and then and then lastly, uh, the last thing that is really coming through me, and and you said you know you're probably sending Reiki with your eyes. I am, but I would invite all Reiki practitioners to instead of thinking about we offer Reiki through our hands, we offer Reiki through our eyes, Gyoshiho, the Japanese Reiki technique, that we just are Reiki. And if it helps you to imagine yourself unzipping your physical manifestation and just being Reiki, emanating Reiki, not anything based on the physicality, but just the presence. Yeah. Um, so that's really kind of what I'm doing. But I, and then this last thing is love. I love them. I, I, as I'm looking into the camera, I am loving them. And I, I just, I know it might sound odd to some people, but I, I so believe that there is light in every person. I don't care what they've done. I don't care, you know, what they think. It is like Reiki non-discriminatory yeah every person has light and again it doesn't matter what they do what they have done haven't done whatever the light is still there the light is still there and i'm honoring i'm recognizing that light through anything of who they might express themselves as that to me doesn't matter and and so that's my process you know for the videos oh that's just incredibly beautiful and it just encapsulates i think your philosophy on life and the great gift that you are sharing with people i just so i've learned so much from talking to you thank you oh you're so welcome you're so well i as you can tell i just love talking about reiki because you know yeah what's, what's your natural so form <laughs> <laughs> yeah i mean what there's just there's so much it's boundless and so in so so many ways and um yeah do you want to talk just quickly about the holy fire trainings that you offer yeah. or what that is how is that different from yeah anything else that people might be familiar with well when i first learned reiki i learned usui tibetan reiki and um and that was great and then i remember holy fire came out and i was like what you know and um i i i also do a podcast and we have a whole episode about different styles of reiki oh, and good. uh and so we do talk more about that so uh i can link to that yeah yeah that'd be great that'd be great because i go into more depth with that uh you know this whole holy fire thing and uh my co-host kathleen also shares her feelings about it too so it's a double dose you know of of um insight i guess but um but holy fire um is really quite remarkable because i guess just for one example is the attunement process and we don't call it attunement anymore we call it a placement and that's for level one and level two and then for the master symbol there's also a placement in the master class but the oh and at the at the master level um for the holy fire we call that ignitions so we have placements and ignitions just different terminology but why do we need a different term well the process is very different and i would say the teacher simply begins a short guided meditation and then is quiet for about 15 to 25 minutes or so quiet and not doing a thing except allowing which is so reiki right not doing being and so but here's the big 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 difference 
the energy meets with each student completely directly and uniquely wherever they are, the energy doesn't come through the master teacher to the student. The energy meets directly with them. And I love that because every person is worthy to meet directly with the source of Reiki. There's another person in the equation really isn't necessary. So the teacher simply provides an opportunity for the energy to meet with them. And then whatever is in their highest good for that process takes place. Now, doesn't that sound exactly like a Reiki session? Yes, yes. Those are the same principles by which it we is. It offer. is, except the energy really isn't channel, even channeling through the teacher at all. Uh, the teacher's more of um, a facilitator, and, a, and, and I, I was going to say observer, but it's actually best if the teacher just um, doesn't even have anything at all to do with it. Isn't that oh. crazy? Well, it makes sense. Uh, really good teachers kind of hold the space for you to have your own growth experience. And we each have our unique connection to source and the way that it comes through can only be filtered through our experience. And I try to do the same thing when I'm teaching. It's like, I'm holding the space for you, get out of the way a bit, but also help you to voice the questions or, you know, observations you might need. And, and especially what you'd mentioned about your husband, someone to get that feedback from of like, mm -hmm. do you feel anything? Cause my mind is not believing that I'm doing this. Like, I think that's the biggest thing for new Reiki students is that process you described yourself going through of like, I'm doing what I'm supposed to be doing, but I'm not feeling anything. So it, there are several reasons why we are taught not to feel in our society, but we may also just need feedback. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that was such a great point too, what you said about not feeling, you know, that we're often not taught that. Yeah, yeah. that's that's in, very insightful. Um, yeah, and so the way this holy fire is 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 learned uh, is very different. And interestingly enough, that uh, style of attunement, I'll just use that word, but the placements and ignitions came about well before the pandemic. And so I was teaching in person classes in that style and it was great, you know, but mm -hmm. then, but then fast forward and then the pandemic comes, it works beautifully online yeah. because you're not having, you know, uh, in the traditional style, we even had what was called violet breath, where we would actually even uh, exhale uh, with intention at the crown of the student's head. And so, you know, it was a physically interactive process. And again, no accidents. And so it was very seamless. It was it was very natural for me to go online with the classes. And, you know, you talk about needing feedback and we can do all that online. And it, the students are amazed that they're feeling things and they, they say, we do exercises in the breakout rooms. If you're familiar with Zoom, I'm getting kind of off in the weeds here with details, but we, yeah. we pair up, you know, for some exercises and there's only two people in their little Zoom room and uh, they work together. And then we come back in the main room and we discuss it. And I love it when they come back, they have the most excited faces. They can't believe it that the what they're experiencing and the fact that it's online just blows them away. And it, it's just, I don't know. Um, I'm just beaming because again, it, there's just nothing better. Uh, I don't think, you know, than, yes. than teaching Reiki. And it's empowering, as you said, is your mission. Mm -hmm. it, you're really empowering people. And in those moments where they feel it and they have a partner they're working with, it's such a beautiful thing to watch when they feel the empowerment. And that is just something they will take with them forever. Yes, yeah. yes. A beautiful gift. Not only do they now have the ability to heal, but they have this 
belief in the experience, this ethereal thing that we cannot see or sometimes prove or um, quantify at all times. This is an important skill for humans to be able to check into these things that are super empowering. Yeah. Well, when a student says, I'm, I'm doing this, I, I can do this. I mean, that's just ah oh, beautiful it is beautiful those words i i can do this it's like yes you can <laughs> <laughs> yeah that's beautiful too it reminds me of being a parent <laughs> sometimes easier with students <laughs> uh, well andrea i really appreciate your time it's so generous for you to spend time with us and i'm happy to share all of your offerings in the show notes and um would you just like to share any way that you would like people to contact you if they're interested in learning more absolutely thank you again as well for the invitation sarah it's, it's so. just been lovely lovely talking with you well my website probably is the the one-stop place you know where you can pretty much find everything and that's mainstreamreiki.com and uh, yeah, the YouTube channel, uh, that's just called Mainstream Reiki. So I'm just keeping it simple. Yeah. And I did mention the podcast. And so I'll let you know that because that's a little bit different name. And that is Beyond the Reiki Gateway. And uh, we have a, a website as well, but we're on all the major podcast apps, you know, like like this one, I'm sure yeah. it is. Um, but we do have a website, beyondthereikigateway.com. And, you know, we named it that because, you know, so many people will learn Reiki like I did. And then it opens up this whole gateway to this whole other world, right, of possibilities of other other modalities, um, you know, different subjects to explore. And, and so that's kind of what we do there on the podcast. But it's just a nod to that. Reiki is a gateway modality, I think, for a lot of people. Yeah, and you don't have to be in the healing realm. You can be a scientist, you can be yes. an artist, you can be, you know, anything. And still, we're human, we all benefit from this practice, whether we use it professionally or on ourselves or just experience it as a recipient. It's really profound. Yeah, yeah, I, I so agree. And a lot of people I meet, uh, and even my students, they'll think, you know, that there's an expectation or something about, well, they have to become teachers, they have to open up a practice. And you know what? No, because it, the beauty of Reiki is it can be everywhere and in everything. So be a social worker and use Reiki, you know, be a nurse and use Reiki, be, um, uh, I don't know, an accountant, <laughs> an artist, right? Um, but be an engineer, you know, because that's, that's the magic, because the more people that are attuned to this flow of Reiki, the more people embodying Reiki, that are out in the community doing mainstream jobs you see there's power in that so that we're just not in a little reiki practice and that's all the no it's everyday people tuned in yeah embodying and being that's that's, hard. that's yeah. how we change the world i really believe that i believe absolutely that is what you're doing and i'm so happy that you were joined us today to talk about this it's super well, thank you so much. Oh, thank you again, Sarah. Thank you. Thank you for listening to the Psychic Artist Podcast. To learn more about me, you can go to sarahrossiter.com on Facebook at the Psychic Artist Podcast and on Instagram at srossiterstudio. Thank you for listening and many blessings.